in this building, uh, Dean Scurry set up a series of meetings with a series of remarkable people with the view to doing one single action that might, in the centenary of 1916, make us feel like we haven't entirely lost our spirit. And that now has manifested in this extraordinary event that the whole country is talking about and other countries are talking about. So on the simplest level, this was a, a, an act of defiance as much as an act of humanity. Dean asked me to write something for Jim Sheridan. Jim Sheridan read it and understandably said, fuck you. And uh, so this is just simple words and they're, all they are is just an attempt to articulate the remarkable capacity that this building has, that these people in the room have, and that we have as a country. It's called, This is Our Ireland. A hundred years ago, men and women fought a bloody war for our Ireland. The most idealistic among us, the bravest among us, the best among us from every rung of society put everything on the line for our Ireland. They are the forefathers of our revolution and we are the sons and daughters of their sacrifice. And we have failed them miserably, horribly, shamefully. This is our Ireland and it's a different war now. Insidious, malignant, cancerous. Idealists are liars, heroes are cowards, bullets are banks, and bombs are big business. They don't call this war a rising or a revolution. They call it austerity. People are profit margins now. Politics is criminal negligence. Death is collateral damage. And this one year, the centenary of 1916, more people have died by their own hand than were killed in the entire Easter Rising. In the last eight years of austerity, more people have committed suicide than died in the 30 years of the Northern Irish Troubles. This is our Ireland, and 100 years after 1916, Austerity is not just a lie, austerity is murder. And this is our Ireland, where corporations can operate tax-free with impunity, where natural resources can be purchased for a song, where our national leaders lie on the world stage about a recovery, where the protected banks can rip people from their homes and vulture funds can peck at the carcasses where families can be burned to death and the survivors are dumped in a concrete car park, where the census office can report a quarter of a million empty properties and the homeless can fuck off and die. This is our Ireland. Idealists fought Ideals fought for by people far braver than us are being systematically destroyed, one human right at a time. And still, we wait. As citizens and non-citizens in second-hand sleeping bags lie on cold concrete while elected and non-elected scum in three-piece suits protect the criminally corrupt. And still we wait. As our parents and grandparents lie terrified on a hospital trolley or slumped alone in an emergency room. As our children or grandchildren make plans to leave the country and never look back or put ropes around their necks because of the legacy we've handed them. As sheriffs come knocking for the keys to our doors and the rights to our homes. All in the name of austerity, that calm, that lie, that scam, that blood splatter. And still we Wait. This is our Ireland, which is why we have no intentions of causing any hurt, which is why we will operate within the law as much as possible. Which is why, as long as a quarter of a million properties lie empty and our government continues to do nothing, we will fight to ensure nobody, nobody else dies in a doorway. We are doing this to show the forgotten forefathers the future 
generations and the entire world that Ireland is made of of a proud and protective people who use our strength to protect our most vulnerable. We are doing this to become the change we yearned for. This is our Ireland, not the governments, not the banks, not the corporations, not the scum in three-piece suits who know the price of everything and the value of nothing. This is our Ireland. And it belongs to the dreamers, the fighters, the explorers, the deeply rooted, the traveler, and the recently arrived. The pink skin, the brown skin, and every in-between skin. The old, the young, the straights, the LGBTs, and the sitting on the fencers. Ireland belongs to the musicians, the poets, the artists, and to their audience. The vulnerable, the special needs, the carers, the mothers, fathers, and brothers and sisters who wake up every day and still somehow find the courage to fight for our better future. Ireland belongs to the people who make you proud to know them. To the storytellers who make you crack up laughing then bend over weeping. Ireland belongs to the innumerable, beautiful bastards known worldwide for their humanity, their decency, their goddamn Irishness. Our freedom was fought for a hundred years ago, and today, we ask ourselves, what are we prepared to do for the people who need us most? We ask ourselves, if not us, who? If not now, when? And finally, we ask ourselves, when exactly did we allow a tiny coterie of controlling class scum make us forget just what a fucking sublime nation we are. This is our Ireland. Thanks for some.